Hello, and welcome to Dracula. I'm Zora Kwasnick, the director. Before we begin, I'd like to provide a brief content warning. This production contains gunshot effects, loud noises, and descriptions of violence. There will be a six-minute intermission between acts. I'd like to thank my actors and production team, as well as our listeners. Without further ado, please enjoy the horror of Dracula. This is Dracula, a radio play directed by Zora Kwasnick and presented by the RC Players at the University of Michigan. Dracula was written by Joe Pine, based on the novel by Bram Stoker, and originally performed by the Ohio Shakespeare Festival. Ladies and gentlemen, you are here to bear witness to one of the strangest tales ever told. There is one thing you must understand, one thing about which you must have no doubt. There are such things as vampires. You may not believe what we say, but this is no fiction. This is our history. We present as evidence the following documents. My diary. And mine kept on phonograph. My journal. And letters in various hands. All needless matters have been eliminated so that our history may stand forth as simple fact. Our tale begins with the private diary of Jonathan Harker. <laughs> Fourth of May, 1895. Bistritz. Transylvania. At last, my long journey is nearing its end. Rather a rough road, isn't it? Driver, hurry! Hurry? I say, driver, at this pace we are likely to reach the Borgo Pass well before schedule. A bit slower, if you please. No, no slower. We must reach the pass before midnight. That won't do. I'm meeting a carriage at Borgo Pass at midnight. Whose carriage? Count Dracula. Nosferatu. I beg your pardon. You must not go. But I have important business. It is the eve of St. George. At the stroke of midnight, all evil things in the world have full sway. I don't understand. If you must go, please, wear this cross. Oh, no. Thank you. For your mother's sake. Of course. The Borgo Pass. No carriage here. The hair is not expected after all. We must move on. But it is an hour less than the time. Best to move on to Bukovina and return tomorrow. Or the next day. Better the next day. But I have a letter from the Count to meet his carriage here at midnight. Then you can wait for him alone. We must move on. You can't just leave me here. You choose. Stay or go. We leave now. You are early tonight, my friend. A carriage and four great black horses had pulled up beside us. Uh, um, the young Englishman, he was in such a hurry. I, I, you cannot deceive me. I know too much, and my horses are swift. The dead travel fast. Shh! Am I glad to see you. They were about to leave me here alone. Come, mine hair. My master awaits. I must have slept. The carriage is gone, the driver is gone, and before me is a vast ruined castle. Where am I? Where is the carriage? That's not a comforting sound. This can't be Castle Dracula. It looks completely deserted. Mr. Harker. Oh, I beg your pardon. You startled me. Are you the Count? 
I am Dracula. What a relief. I'm sorry if I seem jumpy. I must have dozed off in the carriage, and when I awoke, the driver was gone, and the castle looked so deserted. I wondered if I was in the wrong place. I bid you welcome. Come freely, go safely, and leave something of the happiness you bring. It is a pleasure, sir, to finally meet you. Although, I am a bit worried. The driver seems to have made off with my luggage. I took the liberty of having your luggage brought inside. You must be famished. Please help yourself. You will forgive me if I do not join you. I have already dined. Thank you. You are very kind. This is very old wine from my private cellars. Would you care for a glass? Yes, thank you. Aren't you drinking? I never drink. Why? Ah, listen to them, the children of the night. What music they make. Quite. Now, tell me of London and of the house you have procured for me there. Of course. What is this? Oh, uh, you found Mina. I was afraid I had lost her. Mina, your wife? Fiance. In fact, we were just engaged before I came here. Ah, to be young and in love. Once in London, I must have the pleasure of meeting your lovely Mina in person. I'm sure she would be delighted. Now, your new estate is called Carfax, uh, situated in Whitby, just outside London. It contains some 20 acres, is of ancient structure, and is surrounded by a great stone wall. It is very secluded and, to speak plainly, rather gloomy. In short, the estate meets your requirements perfectly. Though, I should mention, one large house next door has been converted into a private lunatic asylum. It is not, however, visible from your grounds. I am glad to hear the house is old. A house cannot be made habitable in a day. And how few days go to make a century. If all is in order, simply sign here and Carfax is yours. Excellent. I long to walk the crowded streets of London, to share its life, its changes, its death. Ah, look. It is almost dawn. How the time flies by us. Tomorrow, I have business which will keep me away from the castle until evening. Then, we will talk more of your native London. Good night, Mr. Harker. Thirteenth of May. Today I explored and found that the castle sits on the edge of a terrible precipice. A stone falling from my window would fall a thousand feet without touching anything. In the castle itself, I found only doors, all of them locked, all of them bolted against me. Castle Dracula is a prison, and I am its prisoner. Among the many strange things about this place, I noticed there is not a single mirror anywhere. In desperate need of a shave, I pulled my pocket mirror from my bag and commenced shaving when- Mr. Harker- Count! You startled me. I didn't see him come in, even though the mirror showed a clear view of the room behind me. Your pardon! The Count reached from my throat with astounding speed. The moment his fingers grazed my crucifix, he recoiled, the fury disappearing as if it had never been there. Take care how you cut yourself. It is more dangerous than you think in this country. 
And this is the wretched thing that has done this mischief. It is a vain bauble of man's vanity. My mirror! Perhaps you should grow a beard. Mr. Harker, may I ask if you have written to your employer, Mr. Hawkins, since your arrival? No. I have not as yet seen any opportunity of sending letters. Then write now, my young friend. Write to your employer, to your pretty fiancé, and to any others that you wish. And say it will please you to stay with me until a month from now. A month? Yes. I wish to have you as my tutor. You will teach me to be a true Englishman. Count, I must admit, I had not planned to be away for so long. I will take no refusal. Very well. I am at your service. Excellent. I trust you will forgive me, but I have much work to do in private this evening. A word of advice, my young friend. Nay, a word of warning. Should you leave these rooms, you will by no means go to sleep in any other part of the castle. It is old and has many memories, and there are bad dreams for those who dream unwisely. A month? How can I stay here another month? This place feels wrong. I would write to Mina of my fears, but I feel certain the Count will read my letters. I am afraid. I opened the window to get some fresh air, hoping to clear my head and think, when I saw movement below. Looking out, I could see that the Count had opened his window and was also looking out. I drew back so as not to be seen, and witnessed, to my unimaginable horror, the Count crawl out of the window and scale the sheer face of the wall, face down, crawling like a lizard, his great black coat spread about him like wings. Fifteenth of May. What manner of man is this? Or what creature in the semblance of man? I have twice seen him from my window crawl out of his room and scale the castle wall like a bat, face down and cape spread about him like great wings. He never eats. He is never about by day. He casts no shadow. He is gone from the castle again today. My only thought is escape. I come upon a door I have not seen before, and unlike every other door in the castle, this one is open. As I enter, I can't suppress a shudder. This room is at least ten degrees colder than the one I just left. Suddenly, I, I can hardly keep my eyes open. <laughs> I am not alone. Go on. You're the first. We shall follow. Yours is the right to begin. He is young and strong, and there are kisses enough for us all. Who are you? Shh. What do you want? You. No. We only want a kiss. You can't. Shh. Just a kiss. <laughs> yes. Just a kiss. Kiss me. <laughs> How dare you touch him? Any of you? We only wanted a taste. How dare you cast eyes on him when I had forbidden it? This man belongs to me! Oh, he's in love. <laughs> he doesn't love. He has never loved. <laughs> I did love once. You know that better than most. 
I promise you, when I am done with him, you can kiss him at your will. Are we to have nothing tonight? You can have this. <laughs> My good young friend, it is time your loved ones should hear from you once more. What? I have written three letters. How did I get back in my room? I have written three letters. One saying you are nearly done with your work and will be starting for home in a few days. Another that you are starting for home on the next morning, and a third that you have left the castle and arrived in Bistritz. You will sign and date them. Why? The post in this part of the world is uncertain. Your signing all the letters now will ensure ease of mind to your friends. The first should be dated June 12th, the second June 19th, and the third June 29th. I now know the span of my life. I will sign them directly. You will sign them now. Is there someone else here? Yes, the Slovaks. My servants. I have arranged for them to handle my... luggage. Finished. Good. I'm not alone. Finally, a way out. If I can get to them to send a letter to Mina, there is hope yet. Hello. Hello there. I need help. Can you help me? I have a letter here. Please see that it is sent. It is vitally important. Sixteenth of June. I awoke to find that all my personal effects are gone. My money, my clothes, everything. These Slovaks must be under his power. I am sure they gave him my letter from Mina. I can look for no help from them. After all I have seen, I am certain Dracula will never let me leave this castle alive. I wish I had some gun or lethal weapon that I might destroy him. But somehow, I fear no weapon wrought by man would have any effect. My friend, we must part. You return to your beautiful England, I to my own labors. I fear we may never meet again. Tomorrow I shall be away, but my carriage shall bear you to the Borgo Pass. May I not go tonight? Dear sir, my coachman and horses are away at present. But I assure you I would walk with pleasure. And your luggage? I can have it sent for later. If you insist, come, my dear young friend. Not an hour shall you stay in my house against your will. Truly. You English have a saying that is very close to my heart. Welcome the coming, speed departing guests. The wolves are hungry tonight, Mr. Harker. <laughs> Shut the door! Shut the door! I take it you will remain until tomorrow? I haven't much choice, have I? No. <laughs> Back to your own places! Your time has not yet come. Have patience. Tomorrow night... Tomorrow night is yours.
30th of June. These may be the last words I ever write. God preserve my sanity. I must act while the courage of the day is upon me. The front door is the only means of escape. But Dracula has the only key and his door is always locked. Desperate times require desperate action. I have seen him scale the castle wall. Why not imitate him and go in by his window? The climb is slow, treacherous. One misstep will send me falling a thousand feet to the icy river below. After what feels like an eternity, I reach his window, which is open. The room, thank God, is empty. No bed, no sign of human comfort. Only a table on which are some coins and a basin with dirty water. Red, as if with blood. The door is open and leads me down into the bowels of the castle. This must be where those Slovaks have been working. For I see shovels and picks and long wooden boxes. They have been filling these boxes with earth from under the castle. But why? As I approach one of the boxes, I can see there is something inside. Something lying on the dirt. My god. It's the Count. He's grown young. His white hair is now jet black. His lips pull back to reveal sharp white teeth, smeared red with blood. What are you? What monster am I helping to move to London? My every instinct tells me to run back to my room and hide. But I think of Mina. I remember how he looked at her picture. I cannot let him leave this castle. I grab a shovel left behind by the Slovaks. I summon all my strength and raise it over my head. Suddenly, I can't move. The eyes, the eyes are wide open and they are looking at me. The shovel falls from my hand and the next thing I know I'm crawling back through my window into my room. I awake to the sound of a carriage being loaded with boxes. Those earth boxes. And I know what they hold. I listen as the horses carry their charge away from the courtyard. I am alone in the castle with those women. No, Mina is a woman and there is not in common. Once more, I must make the climb down the wall, only farther this time. If I can reach the bottom, I can escape. And if I fall, it is better to die as a man. Goodbye, Mina. Murray's journal, 24th of June. I have news! I love being here with Lucy again at Whitby by the sea. I haven't had a letter from Jonathan for weeks, and would be driven to distraction if not for Lucy. I have news! Thankfully, Lucy has always been a reliable source of distraction. Mina, I have news! In a moment, I'm working. On what? My diary. Why are you typing your diary? Why not write with a pen like a normal person? Because it is good practice. When Jonathan returns from Transylvania, I would like to be useful. Oh. I have news! Lucy. Of course, if you don't want to know my news, I can find someone who does. All right. What? Find someone else to tell. Oh, Nina, please let me tell. You're not acting at all like I'd hoped. All right, all right. Tell me, 
What's your news? Guess. Hmm. Would it have anything to do with a certain young gentleman I have heard such rumors about? <gasps> rumors? Have you been gossiping? That isn't like you at all. I suppose you are a bad influence. <laughs> I certainly hope so. Really, though? Do I detect a marriage proposal? Not one proposal, no. Two? Almost. What? Three? Yes! Three! I've had three marriage proposals in one day! Oh, I'm so happy. I don't know what to do with myself. Who were they? Oh, I do feel truly sorry for the two poor fellows I said no to, but... Oh, I'm so happy! Who did you say yes to? Oh, please don't tell any of the girls. They might get all sorts of extravagant ideas, or imagine that they have been slighted for not receiving three proposals themselves. Some girls are so vain. <laughs> Slow down. Tell me, what happened? Of course, of course, but you must keep this a secret. Number one came just before lunch. I've told you of him before. Dr. John Seward. Uh, the lunatic asylum man? Yes. Incidentally, I think he would be just perfect for you. You want me to marry the lunatic asylum man? Well, he runs the asylum. He's not patient. I am engaged. I mean, if not for Jonathan, silly. Anyway, he was so nervous, he almost fell over. Lucy, may I have a word? <clears throat> you are so dear to me. Even though we have known each other for such a short time, you know that I am prone to bouts of melancholy, but if you were with me, it would do much to cheer me. I do not know how I could bear it if you said you did not care for me. R right. Could you learn to love me in time? Is there someone else? I, I do not wish to pry, but so long as a woman's heart is free, a man may live in hope. Oh, Mina, it broke my heart to tell him, but I could not lie to so earnest a plea. There is Jack. I'm so sorry. I hope you will be very happy. If you should ever like a friend, I hope you will count me one of your best. Well, as you can imagine, I was feeling rather guilty having to refuse. But no sooner had Jack left me than my number two arrived. He found me alone. It seems a man always does find a woman alone. Well, no, that's not always true, for my Arthur tried twice to get me alone unsuccessfully, and I'm not ashamed to admit I tried to help him as best I could. Oh, but I get ahead of myself. Number two, Mr. Quincy P. Morris. Is that the American? Yes, from Texas. I met him through Arthur. Well, he came and sat down and looked just as jolly as could be. Miss Lucy, I know I ain't good enough to regulate the fixin' of your shoes, but I guess if you wait for a man that is, he'll be waiting a long time. <laughs> Mr. Morris doesn't always speak this way, but he discovered it amused me to hear him talk American slang, so he shows off as often as possible. Why don't you just hitch up alongside of me and let us go down the long road together in double harness? Oh, he was so jolly. It was not half so hard to refuse him as poor Jack Seward. Well, I don't know anything of hitching, and I do not believe I'm broken to harness at all yet. I've spoken in a light manner. If I have made a mistake in doing so on an occasion like this, I hope you will forgive me. And with that, he poured out a perfect torrent of lovemaking, laying his heart right at my feet. Well, Lucy, you are an honest hearted girl. Tell me, like one good fellow to another, is there anyone else you care for? If there is, I'll never trouble you a hair's breadth again. But will be, if you will let me, a very faithful friend. Yes, I'm afraid there is someone I love, though... He's not yet told me that he loves me. It's better worth being 
plate for the chance of winning you than being on time for any other girl in the world. Oh, I must confess, if my heart had been free, I could have well loved him for that. That other fellow doesn't know his happiness? You better look for it soon, or he'll have to deal with me. Little girl, you've made a friend of me, and that's rare that a lover. Well, won't you give me one kiss? It'll serve to keep off the darkness now and then. That quite won me over. <laughs> well, kiss me. If that don't make us friends, nothing will. Well? Well what? Number three? <laughs> oh, of course! My sweet number three. It was Lord Arthur Holmwood, of course. He's been visiting often. He and my mother get along famously, and he and I have so much in common. As far as the proposal goes, there's not much to tell. Hello, Lucy. Oh, Arthur, what a day I've had. Eventful. Mm, only if you call two marriage proposals eventful. I see. Did you say yes? No. Good. Will you say yes now? He was all so romantic. Before I knew what was happening, he asked me to marry him, and I said yes. Oh, Lucy, I am so happy for you. I'm so happy for me, too. How exciting to both be engaged at the same time. Oh, oh, how selfish of me, bragging away about happiness when Jonathan is half a world away. Don't be silly. I wouldn't dream of dampening your spirits. Tell me all about it. When will the wedding be? Diary of Dr. John Seward, 26th of June. No appetite today. Cannot eat, cannot sleep, so diary instead. Since making a fool of myself yesterday, nothing in the world seems important enough to be worth the doing. The only cure for this sort of thing is work. Patient name, R. M. Renfield, age 35, great physical strength, morbidly excitable, periods of gloom ending in some fixed idea I cannot make out. Indeed, her lunacy seems bent to a singular purpose. Her one redeeming quality is a love of animals, though her pets are of odd sorts. What is it today, Renfield? Flies, doctor. I lay my sugar on the windowsill and collect my little friends in these jars. That is rather clever of you, though I must say it won't do to have this quantity of flies buzzing about. With apologies, you will have to reduce your numbers. May I have three days? I shall clear them away. I had half expected her to break into a fury over this request. Three days later, I visited her again. How are you feeling today, Renfield? Lovely, lovely. I see the flies are gone. Thank you for that. I live to serve. What have you there? Spiders. I see. You use the spiders to eat the flies? <laughs> yes! The spiders eat them. They eat the flies, yes. <laughs> you have traded one pest for another. At all events, Renfield, you must clear out these spiders. Oh, I must get rid of them. I am afraid so. I will give you the same time as before to reduce your supply. In three days, I expect to see the spiders gone. Of course, of course. At that moment, a fly buzzed through the air, and Redfield fell completely silent, tracing the fly's path through the air. With maddening speed, she snatched the fly from the air and put it in her mouth. Oh no, Redfield, don't do that! No, no, Dr. Seward, it's all right. It's very good for me. Wholesome food, you see. The fly is life, strong life, and it gives life to me. There is method in her madness. In three days' time, I visited her again. Have you seen my new friend? A sparrow? How did you manage to catch him? Carefully, doctor, very carefully. I see the spiders are gone. You fed them to the sparrow, didn't you? Doctor, I have a favor to ask you. A very great favor. What is it? I want a kitten. A nice little playful kitten that I can play with and teach and feed, yes, that I can feed. It is an unusual request. Would you not rather have a cat? 
Oh, yes, I would like a cat. I only asked for a kitten that you should refuse me a cat. No one would refuse me a kitten, would they? I am afraid that at present a kitten would be impossible. You must let me have a cat! My salvation depends on it! It is out of the question. Her salvation? There is something in this more than natural if philosophy could find it out. When I returned the next day, her cell was strewn with feathers. Where are your birds, Renfield? They flew away. Catching flies again? You would not give me a cat, so I catch flies. And so the whole process begins again. It seems her desire is to absorb as many lives as she can, and she seeks to achieve this end in a cumulative way. The spiders are worth more than the flies, and the sparrows more than the spiders. How far would she go if given the opportunity? Mina Murray's Journal, 27th of June. I'm so sorry you had to run around with me in the middle of the night looking for me. You are lucky you didn't walk off a cliff before I found you. I can't believe I'm sleepwalking again. I haven't done that since we were children. Yes. Remember how frantic your parents were? <laughs> they were always frantic. They thought I was going to walk straight into the ocean or something. And when they started locking your door at night, you climbed out the window. You were quite tenacious in your sleep. Maybe I should wear a bell. <laughs> I also remember you blaming sleepwalking for a few late night strolls with the neighborhood boys. <laughs> well, it was a very convenient excuse, wasn't it? Strange that it would be happening again after all this time. Yes, I know. And, well, it's different than before. Different how? Well, when I was a little girl, I never remember having dreams. Lately, though, every night I sleepwalk, I have the wildest, most frightening dreams. Dreams about what? That's what's so strange. I remember dreaming, and I remember being afraid. But when I try to think of the details, all I can see are... What? Red eyes. Strange. Looks like a terrible storm. There's a ship out there. I hope they don't get caught in the storm. Let's get home before we get caught in it too. Lucy, did you hear me? Yes, I'm sorry. Ah, we must get back to the house. Red eyes. Diary of John Seward. 27th June. Strange and sudden change in Renfield tonight. I don't want to talk to you. No? You don't count now. The master is at hand. Master? The master of all life is at hand. What of your pets? You have stopped collecting. Bother them all. I don't care a pin about them. You mean to tell me you don't care about your spiders? Spiders? Poor, puny things. Spiders are nothing compared to what he will give me. What do you mean by that? Renfield? All that matters now is him. Twenty seventh of June, night. I awoke to find Lucy gone. The front door was open. I feared what might become of her, wandering with me alone in the midst of this storm. Lucy! 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 I could just see her in her white nightgown, sitting on our bench in the churchyard. From where I stood, I thought I saw a dark shape bent over her. But when I approached, she was quite alone. Lucy, wake up. You have to wake up. We have to go home. Mina? Where are we? At the churchyard. It's storming. We have to get home. I, I saw his eyes. Red eyes. You were dreaming. Come on, before you catch your death. Come on, darling. I heard his voice in my head. Come on, 
red eyes. Twenty fifth of July. I was afraid Lucy's adventure last night would make her ill, but on the contrary, I am really feeling much better today. You look better. Why, thank you. Better than in weeks. Thank you. In fact, you are looking positively radiant. I think you're flirting with me. <laughs> you know what I mean, silly. I am glad you feel better. I was starting to get worried. To tell the truth, it's been so strange. For days I felt so weak, but now I feel so alive, so strong. I'm happy to hear it. Yes, after all those days of horrible dreams and sleepwalking, I can't tell you how good it feels to be back to normal. I am sorry, though, about your throat. I must have caught your skin when I pinned on that shawl. I hope it doesn't hurt. Don't be silly. I don't feel a thing. I hope it doesn't leave a scar. Stop worrying, Mina. It's just a pinprick. I promise I'm all right. But enough about me. Tell me how you're feeling. Have you heard from Jonathan? No, not for weeks. I'm sorry. I try not to worry, but I can't help it. It is so unlike him not to write. I'm sure there's a simple explanation. Like what? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe they misplaced some of his letters. I bet soon he'll get a whole month's worth of letters all in the same day. I hope so. I'm just glad you are feeling better. Me too. No more midnight adventures for me, if you please. <laughs> 25th of July. An unlooked for adventure tonight. My pet patient escaped. We found her before the doors of Carfix Abbey. I am here to do your bidding, master! I am your slave, and you shall reward me! I have worshipped you! Now that you are here, I will await your commands! You will not pass me by, will you, master, in your distribution of good things? We rushed at the woman, myself and two guards. Then she fought with wild power. It took the strength of three of us to finally wrestle her to the ground. I will be loyal to you, master! I have worshipped you! Mina Murray's journal. I awoke to a scratching sound at the window. I turned to see if Lucy was disturbed, and found her sitting bolt upright in bed, staring at the window with wide, frightened eyes. Lucy? What is it? Lucy, you are scaring me! Oh, thank God. It's only a bat. You had me scared half to death. It's flown off now. The next day. Shall we take up our old seat in the churchyard? You really love this spot, don't you? Yes. It's so beautiful, so still. When we were children, you were always so afraid of graveyards. I don't know how I could have been so silly. It's so lovely up here, so peaceful among all these graves. It is certainly quiet. Like death. Pardon? Hmm? You said something just now. Did I? Are you feeling all right? Yes, I feel fine, just... A little distracted, I suppose. We were feeling so strong the other day. I hope you're not getting ill again. I'm fine! Uh, this is where I came the night of the storm, isn't it? Yes, it was. What do you remember? It's all a blur, really. I remember I only wanted to be here, in this spot. There was a singing in my ears, and a sweetness in the air, but bitterness too. 
My soul seemed to pass out of my body and float away. The next thing I remember is you waking me. I wonder what made you come here, of all places. Lucy? She looked suddenly as if she had seen a ghost. His red eyes again. They're just the same. Whose eyes? I'm sorry, Mina, but I'm afraid I've developed a headache. I think I'll go back and lie down. Do you want me to come with you? Oh, no, no, it's nothing. It's just a headache. You stay and enjoy the day. I'll be all right. I won't be long. Feel better. Please help. Please help me. What has happened? Help me. Don't let them find me. Don't let them take me back there. Who are you? Help me. What's happened? Save me from him. From who? He is the devil. The devil himself. It is all right, my child. You are safe now. No one is safe. Where do you come from? No one is safe from him. Mina. You are safe now. Mina. Lucy! Lucy! Lucy, it's wonderful! I've heard from Jonathan at last! Oh, thank God! It is not all wonderful, I'm afraid. It appears Jonathan is ill. Is it serious? I'm afraid so. He was found at a monastery in a terrible state of shock. What happened? I don't know. The sister doesn't say. Though she does suggest that I come straight away. You must go at once. Right this minute if you can. I don't want to leave you alone. Now that you are ill too. Jonathan needs you more than I do. Who will look after you? Arthur's coming today to take care of me. It will be good practice for him for when we're married. Are you sure? You have been waiting so long to see Jonathan again. I will not have you wait longer on my account. Oh, Lucy, what would I do without you? No one on earth has had a better friend. I will write you as soon as I am able. Give Jonathan my love. And thank you, Mina, for everything. Diary of John Seward. 1st of August. The case of Renfield grows ever more interesting. Ever since her escape, she has exhibited terrible violent fits which last all day. Then, as soon as the sun sets, she becomes quiet and peaceful. I can wait. Now I can wait. It seems as though there is some influence which comes and goes. Hello, Jack, old boy. Arthur. This is unexpected. To what do I owe this visit? I wish you would do me a favor. Of course. It is... It is a delicate matter, and I do not wish to cause you pain. But it is rather urgent. If you are in trouble, I will do whatever I can. It's about Lucy. Oh. She's ill. What's wrong with her? She has no particular disease, as far as I can tell, but she looks terrible and is getting worse every day. She didn't want me to ask you, but I didn't know where else to turn. I see. I know how much you care for her. Do you? What? <clears throat> I, I do care for her. That is, as a friend, of course. Um, what would you have me do? Will you come see her? I know it will be a painful task for you, but it is for her sake, and I mustn't hesitate to ask. I will come right away. We went straight to Lucy's bedside and found her much as Arthur had described her, pale and weak. Lucy? I'm sorry if I woke you. Jack Seward is here. Oh, Jack. <coughs> my, my dear friend. Hello. Lucy. 
I told Arthur not to bother you, but it was very sweet of you to come. It is no trouble at all. Uh, Arthur, would you mind excusing us? Of course. Now, Lucy, tell me what has been the trouble. I don't know exactly. Lately, I don't even have the energy to get out of bed. At times, I have difficulty breathing, and most of the time I just sleep, and I have the most frightening dreams. You seem rather bloodless, but you show no signs of anemia. Interesting. As a child, I used to walk in my sleep. The habit came back recently, around the same time the dreams started. Do you remember these dreams? No, no, not really. They frighten me, but when I awake, I can't remember why. Interesting. I hope we haven't bothered you for nothing, though I am glad to see you again. I had thought after. Well, I'm glad we can still be friends. So am I. And it is no trouble at all. In fact, I am glad Arthur came to me. I should like to see you again, if I may. In my official capacity, of course. I would like that very much. Do you think it's serious? Oh, I wouldn't worry. Most likely, some mental stress is the culprit. I have often seen evidence of the mind's power over the body. I would like to speak to Arthur now, but I will see you again soon. Thank you, Jack. Lucy? Yes? Nothing. We will have you feeling better in no time. Well? I have to say, I am at a loss. She shows symptoms of anemia, but she is not anemic. There is something else. Something beyond my skill. What now? There is someone who might be able to help us. My old friend and mentor, Professor Adelaide Van Helsing. She knows more about obscure diseases than anyone in the world. I know she would come if I ask. Yes, by all means, contact her straight away. A few days later, Van Helsing arrived and looked over our patient. Friend John, I have made my examination. It was well that you should send for me. With you, I agree that there has been much blood lost, but the conditions of her are in no way anemic. And yet, there is cause. There is always cause. What is the cause? I must go back home and think. There are certain books I must consult before I can say what is so. You must send me a telegram every day, and if there be cause, I shall come again. The disease interests me much, and the sweet young dear, she interests me too. She has charmed me, and for her, if not for you or disease, I come. What shall I tell Arthur? That is the fiancé, yes. Tell him all you think. Tell him what I think, if you can guess it. <laughs> Nay, I am not jesting. This is no jest, but life and death. Perhaps more. I go now. Remember, telegram every day. Letter to Lucy Westenraw, 15th of August. Dearest Lucy, I know you will want to know all that has happened since we parted. My poor Jonathan is only a wreck of his former self. So thin and pale and weak. He does not remember anything that has happened to him for a long time past. Mina. Yes, darling, I'm here. There is something in my coat pocket. Would you get it for me? It's your diary. Yes. I want you to have it. Why? Part of me wants to throw it away and be done with it. But something in my heart tells me it's important. I've been too afraid to read it and 
And when I try to remember what I wrote in it, I, I feel dizzy. My, my head aches. What do you want me to do with it? Keep it for me. Read it, if you like. But this is your private diary. I shouldn't read this. I don't want there to be any secrets between us. And if anything should happen to me, if this brain fever returns, you should know everything. I will keep it, if that's what you want. But I promise not to read it. Not unless it becomes absolutely necessary. Thank you. That gives me comfort. I have a terrible feeling. Like something is coming between us. Like the horror in this diary is only the beginning. Let's not wait any longer. Let's get married. Here. As soon as we can. Here? Yes. Today. But all your plans. Forget about that. All that matters is that you are safe and we are together. Whatever challenges come, we will face them as husband and wife. Oh, Mina. Nothing would make me happier. Well, Lucy, this was certainly not the wedding I imagined, but I am so happy. I hope you will always be as happy as I am now. Diary of John Seward, 16th of August. Lucy has suffered a setback. I sent for Van Helsing with all possible speed. Have you said anything to our young friend, the lover? No. I wanted to wait until I had seen you. I wrote him that you were coming and that Miss Wistenra was not well. That was all. Right, my friend. Quite right. Better he not know, as yet. For the moment, friend John, we shall keep what we know in our heads and in our hearts. <laughs> my God! She's even worse than before! There is no time to be lost. She will die from sheer want of blood. There must be a transfusion at once. Shall it be you or me? I am younger and stronger. It must be me. Then get ready at once. I am prepared. Jack! Arthur? I read between the lines of your letter and came as soon as I could. My God, what's happening here? Sir, you have come in time. You are the lover of our dear miss. Uh, yes, yes. You must be Dr. Van Helsing. I'm so thankful to you for coming. No time for that. She is bad. Very bad. You are here to help her. You can do more than any that live. Tell me what to do and I shall do it. My life is hers. I would give my last drop of blood to save her. Your last drop? I do not ask so much as that. Not yet. What shall I do? Young Miss is bad. She wants blood, and blood she must have. John was to give his blood, as he is more young and strong than me. But now you are here. If only you knew how gladly I would die for her. Good boy. Come now and be silent. You may kiss her once before it is done, but then you must go. Leave at my sign. Now, little miss, here is your medicine. Drink it off like a good child. Arthur, remove your coat. You may take that one little kiss whilst I prepare. Friend John, help me. As the transfusion went on, something like life seemed to come back to poor Lucy's cheeks. After a bit, the loss of blood became telling on Arthur. What a terrible strain Lucy must have undergone that what weakened Arthur only partially restored her. Do not stir an instant. It is enough. Now, take our brave young lover, give him of the port wine, and let him lie down a while. Then he must go home. He must sleep much and eat much. But, Professor, 
Tell me. I may take it, sir, that you are anxious for results. In all ways, the operation is successful. You have saved her life this time. She will love you nonetheless for what you have done. Thank you, Professor. What do you make of those marks on her throat? Marks? Two punctures, just over the external jugular vein. No sign of disease, but the edges are worn looking. Could this be the cause of her blood loss? No, no, of course not. The bed would be drenched with blood if that were the case. I can make nothing of it. I must go back to Amsterdam tonight. In my hurry to arrive here quickly, there were books and things I left behind which I desperately need. You must remain here all night, and you must not let her pass from your sight. Shall I send for a nurse? We are the best nurses, you and I. You keep watch all night. Do not sleep. Later on we can sleep. I shall be back as soon as possible. Then we may begin. Begin? What on earth do you mean? We shall see. Remember, she is in your charge. If you leave her and harm befalls, you shall not sleep easy hereafter. Later that night... Arthur? No, it's me. Jack, where's, where's Arthur? I thought I saw him here. He went home to rest. The operation was very tiring for him. I can never repay him for what he's done. Nor you. You will never have to. <clears throat> uh, how are you feeling? So much better than this morning. Good. I'm glad to see you talking and smiling again. But I think rest is what you really need. A long night of sleep will do you much good. No. You don't want to sleep? No. I'm afraid. Afraid to sleep? Why? I don't know. And that's what's so terrible. You may sleep tonight. I am here watching you, and I can promise nothing will happen. Truly? You have my word that if I see any evidence of bad dreams, I will wake you at once. You will? Will you really? Oh, how good you are to me. I will sleep well tonight. Seventeenth of August. All night long I watched over her. She never stirred, even though all night a bat or an owl or something flapped almost angrily at the window pane. All day I spent at the sanitarium. No rest all day. No sleep for me again tonight. Lucy, you're up. Yes, and feeling wonderful. I'm glad to hear it. Last night was the first restful sleep I can remember for weeks now. And no bad dreams, thanks to you. Oh, I am so happy to hear it. You look terrible. Thank you? Oh, you know what I mean. You look exhausted. I am a bit worn out, I suppose. You haven't slept at all, have you? Don't worry about me. Well, you certainly won't sit and watch over me tonight. But... I am doing much better today. You do look quite well, but I know if that you must... If there's to be any sitting up, it is I who will sit up with you. But Lucy, Van Helsing insisted that you <laughs> all must... Alright, alright. I will tell you what you will do. You can stay in the next room, on the sofa, and I will leave these doors open. If I want anything, I will call out, and you can come at once. All right. You win. To tell the truth, I could not sit up tonight if I tried. Remember, though, any sign of bad dreams, you call me at once. Of course. I shall not fear to sleep tonight with you so close at hand. Good night, Jack. Seward. Seward. Professor? Have you been here all night? 
Yes, but we left the doors open in case Lucy needed me. How is she? Better than ever when I left her. Come, let us see. <laughs> Gott in Himmel! <gasps> My God! She's worse than ever! How could this have happened in one night? We are not too late. Her heart still beats, though but feebly. All our work is undone. This is my fault. Damn it, I shouldn't have left her alone. No time for blame. We must operate again. I have to call upon your blood this time, friend John. But, Professor, I... I don't understand. Last night she was better than ever. How could this happen overnight? Questions later. Give me your arm. After a time, some color came back into her face. No man knows till he experiences it what it is to feel his own lifeblood drawn away into the veins of the woman he loves. That will do. Already? You took a great deal more from Arthur. He is her fiancé, friend John. You have work. Much work to do for her. The present will suffice. How could she have been drained of so much blood with no sign anywhere to show for it? You go home and eat much, and drink too. I shall sit up with the little miss myself tonight. But, Professor, what is wrong with her? Do not ask me, not yet. Trust me that I will speak plainly enough when the time comes. Nineteenth of August, morning. Thank God for a good night's sleep. Good morning, Professor. Hello, Lucy. Hello, Jack. A good morning indeed, my friend. You see, young Miss has improved. Yes, that's excellent. What do you have there? A present? Oh, Professor. I saw this parcel on the door for you as I came in. Yes, yes, good. These are for you, Miss Lucy. Flowers? For me? Oh, how sweet of you. Yes, my dear, but uh, these are not for you to play with. These are medicines. Am I to eat them? Oh, no, young miss. I uh, put them in your window, around the door, and I make a pretty wreath and hang them around your neck, so you sleep well. <laughs> Professor... I believe you're playing a joke on me. These flowers are only common garlic. I never jest. There is grim purpose in all I do. I warn you, do not thwart me. I'm sorry. I did not mean to joke. Dear little miss, do not fear me. I only do for your good. There is much virtue to you in these common flowers. Come now, friend John. Help me deck this room with my garlic. We set about placing the garlic flowers about the door and windows. Professor, I know you always have reason for what you do, but this? A skeptic might say you are working a spell to ward off evil spirits. Perhaps I am. Uh, take care you do not disturb this wreath, and even if the room feel too close, do not tonight open the windows or the door. I promise. You shall sleep well tonight, my dear. Tonight, I too can sleep in peace, and sleep I want. Tomorrow morning, early, we will come see our pretty miss. So much more strong for my spell, as you say. We awoke early the next day, hopeful for positive results from the professor's strange medicines. On the way to her room, we encountered Lucy's maid. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Hello. You will be happy to hear that Miss Lucy is better today. She was still asleep when I looked in on her. Ah, 
My treatment is working. I do think I deserve some of the credit. How do you mean? Well, I looked in on her last night and she was sleeping very soundly, but the room was awfully stuffy. There were a lot of horrible, strong-smelling flowers everywhere. I feared the odor would be too much for her, so I took them all out and opened the window a crack so she could get some fresh air. You will be happy that I did, I am sure. God! Are all the powers of the devils against us? Devils or no devils or all the devils at once, we fight him all the same. <laughs> oh, we must have another transfusion of blood, or this poor girl's life won't be worth an hour's purchase. No, you are tired already. An old woman's blood is not best, but it will have to do. Maybe I can help. Quincy, what are you doing here? I got a telegram from Art. He hasn't heard from me in three days, so he told me to come check in on things. It looks like I came at a good time. Quincy, this is Professor Adelaide Van Helsing. You only have to tell me what to do. Your brave blood is the best thing in the world for Miss Lucy now. The devil may work against us for all he's worth, but God sends us good men when we need them. Quincy rolled up his sleeve, and again the operation took place. One, two, three, all open their veins for her. If Miss Lucy be sad in the foes that beset her, she is happy in the friends that love her. Friend John, please see to Mr. Morris. I would have words with that maid. What's wrong with her, Jack? I know you medical men like to keep things private, but this is no ordinary case, is it? No. It isn't. I take it that you have already done what I did today? I have. And I guess Art was in on it too? Yes, he was the first. How long has this been going on? About ten days. Ten days? You mean that little creature is taking the blood of three men all within ten days? Man alive, her whole body couldn't hold that much. What took it out? That is the crux. Van Helsing is simply frantic about it and... I am at my wit's end. One thing is certain, I will not leave her side again. Count me in. Just tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Professor, how is she? Friend John, you must send for her fiancé at once. We watched her all night in shifts, Van Helsing and I. Quincy said nothing about his intentions. But I know he spent the entire night patrolling round and round the house. Arthur arrived the next morning. I came as soon as I could. Where is she? She is resting. We have tried to make her comfortable. How long? We do not know. Hours, perhaps less. I want to see her. Of course. Oh, God. Arthur? Uh, yes, Lucy. I'm here. Don't leave. Please don't leave. Never. Draw the curtain. I want light. My God, look, her throat. The punctures are gone. Completely healed. She is dying. No. Arthur? Arthur, are you here? Yes. Lucy. Oh, Arthur, my love. I'm so glad you're here. Arthur moved in for a kiss, but Van Helsing stopped him. No, not yet. Hold her hand. It, it will comfort her more. Oh, Arthur. I'm so glad you've come for me. Kiss me. Arthur again tried to lean in and kiss her. Van Helsing grabbed him by the arm and pulled him violently away. Not for your life. Not for your living soul or hers. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> my, my true friend, promise that you'll give me peace. I swear it. Come, my child. Take her hand in yours and kiss her once on the forehead. 
but only once. Arthur kissed Lucy on the forehead as instructed. Lucy's breathing became suddenly strenuous, then stopped. She is dead. Poor girl. There is peace for her at last. It is the end. No. Alas, it is not so. It is only the beginning.
Westminster Gazette, 29th of August. Hampstead Horror. During the past three days, several cases have occurred of young children straying from their homes in the middle of the night. Each child, when questioned, reported being with a, quote, beautiful lady dressed all in white. Each child was found slightly torn or wounded in the throat. What do you think? Those are the same wounds we saw in Lucy. And what do you make of that? A common cause. Whatever it was that injured her has injured them. That is true indirectly, but not directly. What do you mean, Professor? Be direct with me. I cannot hazard a guess, and frankly, I'm growing tired of all this mystery. You mean to tell me, friend John, that you have no suspicion as to what Miss Lucy died of? She died of nervous prostration following a great loss or waste of blood. Ah, and how was the blood lost or wasted? I do not know. You are a clever man, John, but your wit is prejudiced. You do not let your eyes see, nor your ears hear that which you cannot account for. Professor, what are you trying to suggest? Do you know all the mysteries in life? Can you tell me why, in the Pampas, there are certain bats that come at night and open the veins of horses and cattle and suck dry those veins? Why, in some islands of the western seas, there are bats which hang from the trees all day, and when sailors sleep on the deck because it is hot, the bats swoop down on them and in the morning are found dead men, pale as poor Lucy was. Are you telling me Lucy was attacked by a bat? Not exactly. Then what? You think those small holes in the children's throats were made by the same that made those in poor Lucy? I suppose so. Then you are wrong. I would it were so, but, alas, it is far worse. Professor, out with it! What do you mean? They were made by... Miss Lucy herself. Are you mad? Would I were. My friend, I do not expect you to believe. Not yet. Tonight I go to prove it. Dare you come with me? Where? The logic is simple. If my theory is not true, then proof will be a relief, and no harm will come. But if I am right... Send for Mr. Holmwood and Mr. Morris. Tell them to meet us here tonight at midnight. Then you will see. Mina Harker's Journal, 29th of August, London. It was such a relief to be back home, but today Jonathan suffered a setback. Walking the streets today, he saw someone who frightened him to his very soul. It was him. Upon my life, it was him. Who? The Count. It was the man himself, but upon my life, he's grown young. Please, slow down. You aren't making sense. I am not raving, Mina. This is not madness. I know that face. I will know it as long as I live. Do you still have my diary? Of course. I think it's time to read it. Madam Mina. Mina Harker. Yes? You must then be Jonathan. Yes. Do we know you? No. My name is Adelaide Van Helsing. Van Helsing? You are Lucy's doctor. She wrote me very fondly about you. How is she? Madam Mina, 
You must forgive me that I, a stranger, bring you this news. Is she still sick? Miss Lucy is dead. What? I am so sorry, madam. She was getting married. I was going to see her tonight. Oh, Mina, I am so sorry. <laughs> How did she die? That, in part, is why I am here, my friend. Her illness was very strange. There are many unanswered questions. Madam Mina, I believe you can help me. How? When you were staying with her, Miss Lucy began to walk in her sleep, yes? If I had known I would never see her again, I would have... She's really gone. This will be difficult for you. But I wonder if you could tell me all you remember about your time with her when she first became ill. It may save many lives. My... my diary. Uh... I kept a diary of my time with her. Read it if you like. You would give me your diary? If Lucy put her trust in you, then so will I. I have brought much sorrow to your home. For that, I hope you will forgive me. Of course. Professor, I wonder if you could help me. Anything I can do, gladly. Something happened to me today. It is difficult to explain. This diary contains the account of my recent trip to Transylvania. Whatever happened there gave me a terrible mental shock. Up until today, I thought this diary contained the ravings of a madman, but... I saw him today. I know it was him. I can't explain it, but I feel this is all somehow connected. You may think me strange. Mr. Harker, I have dedicated my life to the study of the strange. I will do my utmost to help you. Here you are, Professor. I hope it will do some good. Thank you both. It may be that I will need your help in the coming days. If I send for you, will you come? Yes, for Lucy's sake. Without hesitation. Diary of John Seward, 30th of August, night. Van Helsing has called us all together. I can't believe I am going along with this. I take it, my friends, that you were surprised to hear from me again. I am about up a tree as to what you could want. Well said. Put simply, I want your permission to do what I think is best this night. Well, I always took it for an honest woman. That's good enough for me. Before I agree to anything, I need to know what you propose to do. I want you to come with me, in secret, to the churchyard in Kingstead. Where Lucy's buried? Yes. And then? To enter her tomb. Professor, are you in earnest, or is this some monstrous joke? I do not jest. And once inside? To open her coffin. This is too much! Arthur, please. Van Helsing has been my friend and mentor for years. She has never given me reason not to trust her. I am willing to be patient in all things that are reasonable, but this, this desecration of her grave, to see her- Lucy is dead. Is it not so? Then there can be no harm done to her. But, if she be not dead... What do you mean? Has she been buried alive? No, she is not alive. I go no further than to say that she is undead. 
Undead. Not alive. What is all this? Please, Mr. Holmwood, let me finish. It isn't enough that you want to sneak into her tomb and open her coffin. What else could you possibly want? I wish to cut off Miss Lucy's head and drive a stake through her heart. Professor, you try me too far. Not for the wide world will I consent to any mutilation of her dead body. I have to go along with Art on this one. Professor, I have been willing to go along with you so far, but had I known this was your plan... Gentlemen, please. I have a duty to protect her grave from any outrage, and by God I shall do it. I, too, have a duty to do. A duty to others, a duty to you, a duty to the dead, and by God I shall do it. Not for the world, and don't dare think more of such a desecration. All I ask you now is that you come with me, that you look and you listen, and when later I make the same request, perhaps your mind will change. There were no more words as Van Helsing led us to the churchyard and into the tomb that we had so recently closed. You will all bear witness that when the lid was sealed, Miss Lucy's body was inside this coffin. Yes. Of course she was. Where else would she- Please, Mr. Holmwood, watch. But it's empty. Professor, is this your doing? I swear by everything you hold dear, I have not moved nor touched her. Where is she? Wait with me outside and you shall see. Come. I am in no mood for games. Where is she? If I told you, you would not believe me. You must see for yourself. We must all hide. Find a place. Professor, this is ridiculous. Hush! There! What is it? Lucy? It can't be her. In a flash, Van Helsing leaped from her hiding place with her lantern held high, illuminating its face. I say it, because while the thing had Lucy's features, it was not her. The eyes were blazing and teeth were large and sharp, the mouth stained with blood. Arthur... You finally come. Lucy. Leave these others and come to me. Lucy, you're alive. <laughs> no, darling. I'm so much more. We can be together again. My arms are hungry for you. Come, and we can rest together forever. Back. In the name of God, get back. Van Helsing pulled her crucifix from her coat. The thing that had once been Lucy hissed and snarled, fleeing back into her coffin. Do you believe now? Am I to proceed with my work? Yes. Do what you will. Come, my friends. The sun is almost upon us. She is trapped. Is this really Lucy's body or some demon in her shape? It is her body, but it is not her. She is undead. Nosferatu. A vampire. The undead cannot die, but must go on age after age, adding new victims and multiplying the evils of the world. For all that die by the undead become themselves undead and prey on others. When this undead be made to rest as true dead, then the soul of the poor lady whom we love shall again be free. So, my friends, it will be a blessed hand that strikes the blow that will set her free. I am willing, but is there one amongst us who has a better right? Tell me what I am to do, and I shall not falter. Brave lad. A moment's courage and it is done. This stake must be driven through her heart. Take the stake in your left hand, 
the hammer in your right, and when I begin the prayer for the dead, in God's name, strike. Requiem eternum dona es domine. Diary of Jonathan Harker, 30th of August. I never thought I would keep a diary again. Professor Van Helsing has sent us her call to action. She summoned us to the home of a Dr. Jack Seward. Hello, Professor. I hope my diary was helpful. Madam Mina, it has been as sunshine to me. There are darknesses in this world, and there are lights. You are one of the lights. You are too kind, Professor. Mr. Harker, I have read your diary too, and am confident to say that you need not wonder any longer. Everything you wrote is absolute truth. All true. You don't know what that means to me, Professor. You don't know what it is to doubt everything, even yourself, even your own senses. But... If it is all true, then Dracula is in London. Precisely, madam. Had I known at the first what now I know, one so precious life may have been saved. Lucy, was Dracula responsible for what happened to her? Yes. Poor Lucy. What is your plan? That, my friends, is why you are here. Jack Seward, Arthur Holmwood, Quincy Morris, meet Jonathan and Mina Harker. I am happy to finally meet you, Mina. Lucy talked about you so often, I feel as though we have already met. I know what she was to you, and what you were to her. She and I were like sisters, and now she is gone, Will you not let me be like a sister to you in your trouble? For Lucy's sake. I'm not sure how to thank you. You will let me be like a brother, will you not, for all our lives? No one but a woman can help a man when he has trouble of the heart. I wish I could comfort all who suffer from the heart. Will you all let me be your friend? And will you come to me for comfort if you need it? Little girl, you'll never regret that true heart kindness, so long as you live. If a man's esteem and gratitude are ever worth the winning, you have won mine today. If you ever need a man's help, you will not call in vain. The light of all lights. Now, to our purpose, I take it you have all read their diaries as I suggested. They have all read my diary? Forgive me, madam, but time is short, and it is imperative that we all know the facts of the case. They have read mine, too, if it makes you feel any better. My friends, there are such things as vampires. The undead. This vampire which is amongst us, this Count Dracula, is himself as strong as twenty men. He has the cunning of ages. He can appear at will. He can direct the fog, the storm, the thunder. He can command all the meaner things, the rat, the owl, the bat, and the wolf. How then shall we find him? And having found him, how shall we destroy? It is a terrible task, my friends, for to fail is not mere life and death. If we fail, we will become as him. What say you? We are with you. Count me in, Professor. I am with you, for Lucy's sake. Of course. Good. Now, the vampire, he can do all these things, yet he is not free, nor are we without strengths. The vampire can only flourish when that he can fatten on the blood of the living. Without blood, he will die. 
That doesn't help us much. He has no shortage of blood here in London. Yet, he is not free. He may not enter any house unless someone of the household invite him. Though, afterwards, he may come as he pleases. His power ceases with the coming of the day. If he is not in his coffin home when the sun rises, he must remain in whatever form he finds himself until the sun sets. He can move about by day. I had always heard in the old stories that sunlight was fatal to vampires. That is a common myth. He can move about by day, but it is not his natural time. How do we hurt him? We've heard about what he can and can't do. But what about us? What power do we have? Much, my friend. There are, indeed, things that will hurt him. Garlic, the Holy Host, Holy Water, the Crucifix. If we obey what we know, when we find this man that was, we may confine him in his coffin and drive a stake through his heart. <laughs> Easier said than done. How are we going to find one man in the middle of London? I can help with that. Fifty boxes of earth were delivered to Dracula's estate at Carfax. How do you know that? I bought the house for him, remember? Carfax? Next door? He has been right next door this whole time? Yes. If only we knew. We know that at least some of the boxes have been removed, though we don't know how many or where. Our first step must be to ascertain how many of his earth boxes remain at the house next door, and how many have been removed. Then what are we waiting for? I said we go have a look at the house right now. Quite right, my brave friend. Millard! What in hell? Millard, where are you? I must speak with you. It's Renfield. She's escaped from her room again. I'll call the guard. No, wait. I should very much like to hear what Miss Renfield has to say. Dr. Seward! Oh, pardon me. I did not know that you had company. Do not be alarmed, Miss Renfield. No one here will harm you. I <gasps> am Dr. Ad I know who you are. Uh, Professor Adelaide Van Helsing. I've read your books. This is indeed an honor. Enough of the niceties, Renfield. How did you get out of your cell? Excuse me, Doctor. May I? Good evening, Miss Renfield. You're not the girl the doctor wanted to marry, are you? No, you can't, be, for she's dead. Renfield! It's all right. I have a husband of my own. This is Jonathan. I am Mina Harker. Mina. <laughs> How do you know me? Dr. Seward has told me of you. Has he? You aren't seeing me at my best, I'm afraid. You need not be ashamed. It is a brave woman who is willing to accept the help of others. How did you know I wanted to marry someone? You must not stay. Why not? I am not a sane woman, Mrs. Harker. I know that. My friends were right to insist that I be put under control, but I have my moments of lucidity, and this is one of them. You must not stay here. Why not, Miss Renfield? What do you know? Too much to live. You're wrong. Trust me, Miss Renfield. There are people in this room with the knowledge and the power to help you. You must all excuse me, but I have a matter I wish to discuss with Dr. Seward and the professor in private. But I would very much like to hear what you have to say. We will be but a moment, gentlemen. Prepare for our search of Carfax, and we will join you presently. Madam Mina, I'm afraid that for you the evening is over. I beg your pardon? We must not walk you into danger. We will tell you all in good time, but for tonight, we must know that you are safe. Professor, I have no intention of watching you all walk into danger and not be there with you. I have not been a hindrance thus far, have I? Of course not, madam. Mina, please. I didn't like what Renfield was saying to you. I will feel so much better knowing you are safe. 
Jonathan, I have just as much right as anyone here. Mina, please. For your sake, then, Jonathan. This time. Goodbye, Miss Renfield. I hope I may see you again under better circumstances. I pray God I may never see your sweet face again. All right, Renfield, what's this all about? You have to send me away from here, Seward. Send me far away. Send you away? I desire to go at once, now, in this very hour, this very moment, if I may. I'm afraid not, Renfield. I implore you not for my own sake, but for the sake of others. Can you not tell frankly your real reason to be free tonight? That I cannot do. I am not my own master in this matter. I can only ask you to trust me. You know full well we could never agree to this. Let me implore you. Let me entreat you to let me out of this house at once. Send me away how you will, where you will. You don't know what you do by keeping me here. You don't know whom you wrong. Don't you understand I am not a lunatic in a mad fit, but a sane woman fighting for her soul. Come, no more of this. We have had quite enough. Try to behave more discreetly. We will take you back to your cell and mind that you do not leave it again. You will, I trust. Dr. Seward, do me the justice to bear in mind, later on, that I did what I could to convince you tonight. My friends. We walk into terrible danger. Remember that our enemy cannot be harmed as we can be harmed. We must, therefore, guard ourselves from his touch. Keep these crosses near your heart. Now, friend John, the door. In manus tuas domine. That smell! It's like death. That's the Count, all right. It's unbearable. Try living with him for a month. Come on, gents. Smell or no smell, let's get on with it. I feel like we are being watched. Everyone stay sharp. We must see how many of his boxes are left. Every room must be searched. I thought I saw a face. So, so did I. Nothing. Mina Harker's journal. The men have gone hunting. I hate being left in the dark like this. I have just as much a right as anyone else to hunt down this creature that destroyed my friend. Strange. Of a sudden, the air feels so close. My eyes are so heavy. Hello? Jonathan, is that you? Mina, come to me. We searched Carfax from top to bottom. 29 is the final number. Only 29 out of 50. Yes, and we searched every room twice. 21 missing. What do we do about these? Burn them? No need for that. Place a crucifix in each, and he can no longer come near them. That won't do any good if we can't find the others. Leave that to me. Rest assured, friends, the first victory is ours. Diary of John Seward, 1st of September, 
Jonathan has been following leads all day trying to track down the remaining boxes. Right now, he is our best hope. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, Mina. You're looking cheerful this evening. Why, thank you. I feel wonderful. I had such a restful sleep last night. Where's Jonathan? He is out. I can see that. Where is he? He is following up some leads with the other- Seward. I see. Some Dracula business? He told you not to tell me, didn't he? I am sorry, madam, but he is only trying to keep you safe. Yes, of course. Keep me safe. After all, I'm only a silly housewife, aren't I? I'd be much safer in the kitchen, I suppose. Mina. Oh, never mind. Tell Jonathan I went to bed. She didn't seem quite herself, did she? No, she did not. Good evening, gentlemen. Where's Mina? She said to tell you she was going to bed. She's upset, isn't she? She wants to help. I know. But she doesn't know what she's asking. I do. I have been face to face with this monster. And I don't want her anywhere near that nightmare. It is for the best, my friend. Maybe later, after all is done, we will tell her of these days. But for now, she is safer in the dark. What were you able to find? A promising lead. As clever and as careful as he is, the Count's purchases still leave a trail. He bought a house three weeks ago at 347 Piccadilly. This has been a great day's work, friend Jonathan. Let's not count our chickens until we know all 21 boxes are accounted for. He could have dozens of houses all over the city. At least we have a place to start. Though, I don't know how we can expect to break into a house in the middle of the day in Piccadilly and not be caught. Oh, you'd be surprised how far a well-placed bribe will get you these days. Thank God for rich friends. Well, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I think I will join Mina. It has been a long day. Of course, my friend. Sleep well, and know you have done much good today. Uh, Professor, there is something I have been wondering. Who is this Dracula, really? I mean, he must have been human once. Indeed, he was. In life, he was a most remarkable man. If I am correct in my assumptions, this Dracula was a Transylvanian prince some 500 years ago. 500 years? Yes. He was a vicious warrior, known by his enemies as Vlad Zepesh, the Impaler, a name he earned by impaling his enemies on pikes. Charming. It was even rumored that he would take his meals amongst his dying enemies and drink their blood. It would appear his taste hasn't changed in 500 years. What in hell was that? It sounded like Renfield. We rushed to Renfield's room and found the woman lying on the floor, bloody and broken. My God, is she alive? Just barely. What could have happened to her? I hope she will be able to tell us. Her words may be worth many lives. Renfield. Renfield, can you hear me? Who? Dr. Seward? Yes, Renfield, it's me. I have had a terrible dream. Why am I on the floor? Don't try to move. Tell us of your dream, Renfield. I must not deceive myself. It was no dream. What happened? I am dying, aren't I? I have but a few minutes. I have something I need to say. Last night, after you left me, after I implored you to let me get away, he came to me. Go on. 
He came to my window in the mist. I didn't ask him to come in at first, though. I know he wanted me to. Then he began promising me things, not in words, but by doing them. Doing them? By making them happen. <laughs> a, a dark mist spread over the lawn, coming on like a flame of fire. Then he parted it, and I could see that there were thousands of rats with their eyes blazing red, like his, <laughs> only smaller. I thought he seemed to be saying, rats, 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 thousands, millions of them, all red blood, all these will I give you if you will obey me. What did he want you to do? Before I knew what I was doing, I found I was opening the sash and inviting him in. Renfield? Renfield? All day I waited to hear from him, but he did not send me anything. Not even a fly. Tonight, he came through the window, even though it was shut without knocking, like he owned the place. Uh, he doesn't care for me. He only cares for her. He is favoring her and leaving me with nothing. So when he came in tonight, I was ready for him. I have heard that lunatics have great strength, and when he came in, I grabbed him and held him as hard as I could. <laughs> then I saw his eyes, and my strength became like water. He picked me up and slammed me down as if I was a doll. Then he slipped under the door. He is here. Arm yourselves, there's not a moment to lose. Jonathan! Jonathan, wake up! Jonathan! If you make a sound, I will snap his neck before your eyes. So you, like the others, would play your brain against mine. Me! who commanded nations hundreds of years before you were born. You would help these men hunt me and frustrate my design? You know now what it is to cross my path, as they will know too before long. Whilst they played wits against me, I was countermining them. Now you. Their most beloved one, our flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. You will come at my call. When I will it, you will cross land or sea to do my bidding. To that end... <laughs> we ran as fast as we could to Mina's room, finding it locked. Quincy and Arthur slammed their shoulders against the door, breaking it open. What we saw inside turned our blood cold. Jonathan lay unconscious on the bed. Dracula was in the room, holding two of Mina's hands on one of his, his other hand wrapped around her throat. His shirt was open and blood oozed from a cut in his chest. When we entered, he was forcing Mina's mouth to the wound. When he saw us, he threw her down like she was a doll. Quincy rushed at him, but was thrown back with amazing power. He looked about to pounce at us when the professor leapt forward, crucifix held out at arm's length. Dracula recoiled instantly from it and back toward the open window. Before we could move against him, with incredible speed, he was out the window in a swirl of mist. It's all right, Madame Mina. It's over. Yeah. Quincy, are you all right? Don't worry about me. He may still be in the house. Come on. Jonathan, can you hear me? Seward, what happened? What, 
What happened to Nina? Was he here? Yes, but we drove him off. Where? No, no! Stay with me, don't leave me! Do not fear, my dear. We are here, and while we are close to you, no foul thing can approach. Mina. No. Jonathan, I must never touch or kiss you again. What are you talking about? It's too dangerous. You mustn't come near me. I'm not afraid. Nothing will come between us, not even this. There's no sign of him anywhere. We looked into Renfield's room, but... But what? She's dead. Poor woman. Friends, we have made a great mistake. We sought to protect Mina by keeping her in the dark. We were wrong to do this. From now on, nothing must be kept from her. No more secrets. The situation is bad. The vampire has baptized Madame Mina in his own blood. Now, in life, she will become the foul thing of the night that he is. You mean... I will change whether I live or die? Yes. It is more important than ever to find him and destroy him. Only then will you be free. Oh, God. This is his way of punishing us. Exactly. But do not despair. Today is ours. We have all this day to seek out his lairs and sterilize them. Then what are we waiting for? Are we all armed? Of, of course, course you're right. yes. Good. Place your weapons on the table. What for? Against the enemy we face, they are useless. I don't know about that. This seems like it could do some damage. A kukri? I have read about these. Good god, it's practically a sword. Huh. Cute. This here's a bowie knife. Show off. If we are finished measuring weapons, lay them on the table. What is that? Holy water. In nomine patri e fili e spiritu sancti. Now they will protect you. I always wanted a magic knife. Madam Mina, you are quite safe here until sunset, and before then we shall return. But before we go, let me see you armed against personal attack. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ah! The cross burned her forehead! Mina! Professor, what is this? It's happening already! I'm changing! I won't let that happen. But what can we do against power like his? We won't quit, Mina. I'll die before I see you in his hands. That goes for all of us. You see... He has all the powers of darkness, but we have something much stronger. Do not give up hope. Thank you. All of you. Come, gentlemen. We must waste no time. To one thing I have made up my mind. If we find out that Mina must be a vampire in the end, she shall not go into that unknown and terrible land alone. We boarded the train for his house in Piccadilly and searched it from top to bottom. Twenty. Only twenty? Are you sure? We searched every room twice. Only twenty. Damn! One box missing. What do we do now? Now we wait. What about the missing box? The Count is sure to come here before sundown. If we do our work, then we will have no need for the missing box. And if he escapes? We need a plan of attack. Quite right. Quincy, you Quiet. should- Quiet! Be ready. In a flash, he was in the room, 
Quincy fired. The bullets had no effect. We all began reaching for our weapons, the ones blessed with holy water. But before we could reach them, the Count held up one terrible hand, and we could not move. We were powerless. Then a horrible grin came over the Count's face. A grin of triumph. You think you baffle me? You, with your pale faces all in a row like sheep in the butchers. You shall be sorry yet. You think you have left me without a place to rest, but I have more. My revenge on you had just begun. I spread it over centuries. Time is on my side. The one you love is mine already. She is with me always, over land and sea. Through her, you shall all be mine. With these last terrible words, he leapt from the window. As soon as he did this, his spell over us ceased, and I was after him in an instant, but could find no sign of where he had gone. We'll try to head him off. Seward, we have learned something much. For all his brave words, he fears us. He fears time. For if not, why does he hurry so? Mark me, he fears us. No, sir. We lost him. The sun will set soon. We must go back to Mina. Sterilize these boxes, then all we can do just now is done. We need not despair. There is but one more earth box, and we shall find it, as I live. Mina Harger's journal. The men all returned, breathless and pale. What happened? Did you see him? Yes. He got away from us. All but one of the earth boxes has been accounted for and sterilized. All but one? I was so close, Mina. I let him get away. Damn him! Jonathan? I want you to bear something in mind. All of you. I know you must fight, that you must destroy him, but it is not a work of hate. The poor soul who has wrought all this misery is the saddest case of all. Just think what will be his joy when his soul is freed. You must be pitiful to him, too. May God give him into my hand long enough to end his earthly life. If beyond that I could send his soul forever into burning hell, I would. No, Jonathan, please don't say that. Just think. Perhaps someday I too may need such a pity that some other like you with equal cause of anger may deny it to me. Mina, I'm sorry. We can do no more today, at any rate. The sun is setting as we speak. Professor, I need you to do something for me. Anything. Hypnotize me. What? Hypnotize me. Now, before the sun completely sets. Clever woman. What good will that do? Remember, Dracula said that Mina was already his. That she is with him always. Of course. Lay back, please. Take deep breaths. I don't follow, Professor. Quiet, please. Do not disturb me. What is going on? It would seem that Dracula holds some mental connection with his victims. Normally, that connection only goes one way, from Dracula to his victim, but under hypnosis... Perhaps we can make the connection work in the opposite direction, and then Mina can tell us- She can tell us where he is. Can you hear me? Yes. Are you with him? Yes. Where are you? 
I don't know. It is all strange to me. What do you see? I see nothing. It is all dark. What do you hear? Lapping water. I can hear it outside. You are on a ship? Yes. What else can you hear? Men stamping overhead. Clatter of chains. What are you doing? I am still. So still. It is like death. Mina. Mina, can you hear me? Professor? Did it work? Yes. You may have saved us. What did I say? He is on a ship. We know now what is in his mind. He thinks to escape, but no. We will follow him, even to the jaws of hell. He wants to return to Transylvania. Knowing that he travels by ship, I'm sure he would seek a route through the Black Sea. If I were him, I would sail into Galatz. It is the most direct route. He hates the water. What? Hmm? You said something just now. Did I? I'm sorry, my mind was elsewhere. If we leave today, by train we can arrive in Galatz in three days. We will set forth immediately. Jonathan, wait. There is something I need to say, and I fear I don't have much time. Time for what? It will be night soon. He won't let me speak freely at night. What do you need to say? You must promise me that. Should the time come, you will kill me. What? Promise that you will do for me what they did for Lucy. No. No, I can't promise this. I won't. You must. Why are you saying this? Jonathan, you know me better than anyone. You know I would not ask this lightly. What happened to Lucy was a sacrilege. My sweet, loving friend turned into a monster. You cannot let that happen to me. Mina, I understand. I do. But it will never come to that. We are going to kill him. That will be the end of it. You don't know that. I know how hard this is. But I need to know will not let me suffer. I promise. of September, aboard the train bound for Galatz, we laid out our plan of attack. Once his ship lands, there are any number of ways to get to the castle. Trains, river passages, and mountain roads all offer access. So we pick the fastest route and get to the castle before he does. But which is the fastest route? Road, rail, or water? Perhaps I can help. We can rule out the road, as there he would run the greatest risk of capture either by us or by other officials. We can also rule out by rail, since he would be at the mercy of train delays, which are very common in this part of the world. That leaves water, which is his safest and fastest route. I've studied the maps and have found that the Sarath River would take him right to the Borgo Pass, as close a route to Dracula's castle as can be reached by water. Mina is once more our teacher. Her eyes have seen where we are blinded. On horseback, we can reach the castle before he does. I will buy some horses. We must assume that he is using the Slovaks as his servants. They are strong and carry heavy arms. 
I brought along some Winchesters. They are pretty handy in a crowd. What about Mina? She will come with us. Right into the heart of the enemy's country. I know we vowed not to keep anything from her. But to bring her right into the jaws of his death trap? Not for the whole world! Mr. Harker. I don't want her anywhere near that place! My poor friend. In order to save Madame Mina from that awful place, she must come with us. How does bringing her there keep her safe? Think, Mr. Harker. She is under his spell. When he wills it, she must cross land or sea to do his bidding. To resist his call would kill her. She's right, Jonathan. I can feel his power over me growing. I can't resist him. I'm not strong enough. Yes, you are. I know you are. No, Jonathan, I'm not. I hear him in my head all the time now. I'm not even in control of my own mind. Nina. I'm sorry I brought this upon us. If I hadn't gone to Transylvania... No. None of this is your fault. We have all been set on this path, and we must see it through together. Diary of John Seward, 24th of September, three days on the road. Arrived at the Borgo Pass just after sunrise yesterday morning. We will make camp here for tonight. The air feels so heavy all of a sudden. Yes, and the birds have stopped singing. It's the castle. We have entered its shadow. It knows we are here. Which is the way? That way. How do you know? Of course I know! Mina, why don't you try to eat something? I'm not hungry. You haven't eaten all day. You really must eat, Mina. As a doctor, I implore Leave you to- Leave me alone and let me rest. But you've been asleep all day. Van Helsing produced a wafer from her pocket and began crumbling it, arranging the pieces into a circle around Mina. Professor, what are you doing? You shall see. What is that? The Holy Host. Now, Madam Mina, will you come over to the fire? Uh, come over to the fire. I can't! Are you sure? Yes, it's, it's like I'm hitting a wall. Good. What does this mean? It means that she is safe. If she cannot pass the circle, then those who we fear cannot enter. Circles in the dirt, holy water, garlic. My god, a month ago I would have laughed at all this and called us madmen. Perhaps we are God's madmen. <laughs> <laughs> what in hell is that? Everyone, inside the circle, quick. What is it? It's them. Sister, at last you've come. We've been waiting for you. Stay back! <laughs> oh, look, sister. It's our favorite present. He left us so soon. We didn't get a chance to play. <laughs> but he came back to us. And he brought our sister with him. <laughs> she will never be one of you. She is already. Stop! Do not leave the circle. Seward, grab him. That circle won't protect you for long. <laughs> he is almost here. Come <laughs> to us, sister. We will welcome him together. <laughs> Professor, please. You are afraid of them. Yes, yes, make them go away. God be thanked. If you are afraid, you are not yet one of them. Back, you are not welcome here. <laughs> you think you can stop him? This is his land. This is his home. <laughs> you are nothing. You have no power here. <laughs> Get back! This is holy ground! <laughs> They're killing the horses! <laughs> Diary of Jonathan Harker, 25th of September, 
arrived at the castle late in the afternoon. Van Helsing, Arthur, and Quincy have undertaken a gruesome task. Are you all right, Mina? It hurts. I wish you would stop. We are running out of time. I'm afraid you're right. Her pulse is very weak and the teeth are growing. One way or another, it will end today. The butcher's work is done. Those three poor souls are free. All the entrances to the castle have been fixed with the crucifix. We have him trapped. He is coming! He is close! This is it! Everyone arm yourselves! He is coming for me! Professor, get Mina to safety! He is here! Four Slovaks approached on horseback, pulling behind them a cart. On the cart was the last earth box. Move away from that box! Fire! <laughs> the Slovaks fought us fiercely. Quincy, Seward, and Arthur took aim with their rifles, killing two. The others closed in on us with their swords, slashing madly at us. I fought one off with my kukri knife, and I saw Quincy struggling with the other, parrying the madman's blows with his great bowie knife. Quincy, get to the box! I finally managed to get the upper hand on my attacker. I saw that Quincy too had killed his man, but he grimaced and held his side, and I could see blood dripping between his gloved fingers. Harker, hurry, the sun! Without delay, I jumped on the wagon, and as I was prying off the lid of the box... You are too late! The Count burst from the box and in one swift motion had me by the throat. You are too late. He threw me to the ground as if I was a child. You dare to think you can defeat me? Now you will watch while I take your precious one for my own. Mina, come to me. I leapt to my feet to rush out of him, but again he held up his hand. We were all frozen in place like statues, unable to move. Mina had moved up beside me, a strange, faraway look in her eyes. Then, with impossible strength, she wrenched the knife out of my hands. You see? She is mine. She will be mine forever. My bride throughout eternity. Mina, leave these fools and come to me. Mina, I know you can hear me. Fight him! The sun is gone. There is no power in heaven or on earth that can fight me. Mina, fight him. You're stronger than him. You will be flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. No, you won't take her too. Mina, fight! Come to me! Don't let him win! You are mine forever! Mina, please. In a moment that seemed to last for an age, Mina looked from me to the Count. His eyes blazed with inner fire, and his lips spread in a ghastly grin of triumph. Mina turned to him took one step closer as he wrapped his cloak about her. Ah! Suddenly, we could move. The spell broken, and we could see that Mina had plunged her blade into Dracula's heart. Quincy, your knife! He tossed his knife to me, and in one swift motion, I slit the monster's throat. Ah! An instant later, the body crumbled into dust. Mina, are you all right? His eyes. I felt so lost. I heard your voices. I couldn't move. Then I heard you. You came back to us. You beat him and came back to us. No. Nah. Quincy, you're wounded. Let me take a look. How is he? Not good. Oh no. Quincy. No, 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 mean. Don't be sad for me. It hasn't been in vain. Look! 
That scar on your forehead is gone. The curse is past. To give my life so that you might be free, <laughs> it's more than I deserve. All the evidence is now before you. We have added nothing, nor have we omitted anything that would refute the truth of these events. We cannot force you to believe us. You must decide whether to accept our story as fact or dismiss it as fiction. There remains but one final entry from the diary of Mina Harker. I shall be glad as long as I live that in the moment of Dracula's final dissolution, before the fiend's body crumbled into dust, there appeared in the face a look of peace, such as I never could have imagined might have rested there. This has been Dracula, a radio play presented by the RC Players. We are Mitchell Sally as Jonathan Harker. Aaron Ruark as Mina Murray. Adrian Beyer as Dr. John Seward. Emily Considine as Professor Adelaide Van Helsing. Olivia Sulis as Lucy Wessenra. Jesse Mattox as Arthur Homewood. Max Clark as Quincy Morris. Maria Le Cicero as R.M. Renfield. Morgan Kissner as Sister Agatha. And Norse Aubrey as Count Dracula. Thank you for listening. Directed and produced by Zora Kwasnick. Assistant Director Ari Richardson. Stage Manager Michelle Asgrizzen. Technical Director Christopher Wong. RC Players Board Liaison, Abby O'Meara.